dab it with slime, with pitch, and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked by the river's side. And when they saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And the Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away, and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child, and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh, brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. I've just read to you Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. May the Lord have a special blessing upon the readers hearers and doers of his word. Amen. At this time, I would like to all, all that are able to please stand for prayer. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our God, help us to be aware of your great mercy and ever present care for us. Help us to always be aware of your presence in our deepest times of depression. Heavenly Father, please guard us from uncontrolled anger May the words that we speak bring honor to you. Lord, thank you for bearing our burdens. We know that you hear our cries and will answer in accordance to your perfect plan and purpose. Please add a special blessing on every mother and their mothers if they're still, if they're still here with us. Please heal the sick and have mercy on the ones who have strayed away. Continue to build us up as you have us to be. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I cannot take the world and hold it in my hand. I cannot take the lightning and flash it across the land. I cannot take a piece of
holy and mighty name as we glorify him with all of our strength, with all of our hearts, and with all of our minds. It's always good to recognize how good God is and for all the blessing that he has so richly and wonderfully bestowed upon us. Even though we recognize that we are blessed, God's favor is upon us. Yes, we know that we still have some work to do in our life. Amen. We all are working progress. And every day I trust and pray God is changing us for the better in order that we might make heaven our eternal home. It's good to see those who are visiting with us, those who are, have come in town or come to the city uh, to be with their families, to be with their mothers. On this day, we, we thank you for uh, loving your parents enough to be here and, and to give them the honor that is due them. We acknowledge how awesome how, and how wonderful parents are. Yeah. Amen. And we also acknowledge how wonderful and how great mothers are in this world. Yes. Amen. 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 If you don't believe me, if you didn't have a mother, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> but we come focused to praise God and to give tributes to our mothers. In the book of Exodus chapter 2, you read, uh, it was read, verses 1 through 10, and it talked about the birth of Moses and how his mother, Jehovah's, uh, Jacobed, uh, raised him in spite of the king's command to kill all the male child. She was a great woman of faith that saw her son as being special. And the Bible said that she hid him for three months. And her daughter, Moses' sister, took him uh, put him in the river as his mother had made this ark. Right, right. And it floated down the river to where Pharaoh's daughter was bathing. And the Bible says she sent 
one of her servants to fetch the ark. And when she opened it, she saw a Hebrew baby who was crying. And Moses' sister said, you need a nurse. Somebody that can help you raise this child. And she said, I'll get one for you. And she went and got Moses' mother to nurse him and to raise him. Now, when you get to Hebrews 11th chapter and verse number 23 is where I'm going. It says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Uh -huh. I want to use the subject Jacobed, a woman of faith. All right. I trust today that it has been a good day for all of our mothers. But I'm very conscious that there are some in our service today for whom Mother's Day is uncomfortable at best and even painful at worst. Mother Day, Mother's Day can also be a reminder of some unpleasant moments in life. Amen. And I hope my lesson does not add to your pain, Amen. but that somehow you will be able to eternalize the message behind the message. Today's message is about a mother in the Bible, and I would be speaking at times directly to mothers in particular, but the application of the lesson is universal. All right. They applies to everybody here on this morning. Amen. Whether you have children or not, whether you're married, single, or single parent, whether you are male or female, whether you're a teen or an adult. This lesson is applicable to everybody. All right. But especially I want to use a look at our mothers today. Right, An illustration that I saw once, it was on a Mother's Day, written in the newspaper in a comic strip, and it said, for better or worse, and the comic strip had this son named Michael in the comic strip whose mother was tossing and turning in bed thinking about her role as a mother. Asking herself, am I too tough or am I too lenient? All right. Do I give in too much or too seldom? Do I listen to what he has to say or, and do I understand him? Do I nag him too much? Am I really a good parent? And the last frame showed Michael laying on his bed and he is saying the problem with grown-ups is they think they know it all. But no, 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 Michael. Maybe not so. In fact, mothers recognize all too well that they send their children off in the morning and all kinds of bad things lie in wait for them. Amen. Things like drugs, gain, alcohol, right, yeah. pornography, and moral temptation. Yes. In the past, our educational system encouraged development of Christian principles and attitudes, but not today. Right. Too often children are taught that there are no absolute standards of right and wrong. Right. So it's difficult being a Christian mother today. But as hard as that may be, we need to realize that difficulties are not unique in our times. In every age, motherhood has had its share of difficulties. So today I want to talk about Jochebed, the mother of Moses, who reared Moses up in a difficult time in a pagan society. The Hebrews had been in Egypt for 40 years. They multiplied so rapidly that the Egyptians felt threatened, yeah. ultimately leading them to force 
the Hebrews into slavery. And yet the Hebrew population continued to increase. In a desperate measure to control this population growth, Pharaoh decided that all males, baby under two years old, were to be killed. Moses was still a baby boy at this time. So you can imagine the horror that his mother experienced. Fearing the discovery of Moses, she conceived a plan to put Moses in a basket of reed and pitched it, pitched it so that it would float and put it in the river and trusting God to protect him. Moses floated down the river, as I've said, where Pharaoh's daughter happened to be bathing. The book of Exodus chapter 2 and verse 6 says, she opened it and she saw the child. And behold, the baby was weeping. You see, God is always working. When a parent tried to do the right thing. You see, Pharaoh's daughter had compassion on the baby right, right. and said this is one of the Hebrew Hebrews child and noted how God intervened Moses sister uh -huh. was watching the basket right. or the ark as it floated uh -huh. and she saw that it ended up it and Pharaoh's daughter who was bathing at this time sent one of her servant maids and said, go get it for me. And when she opened it up, she saw the child. And then, I'm sure this is Miriam, yes. who, 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 when she recognized what had happened, she knew Pharaoh's daughter couldn't raise a Hebrew child, a Hebrew boy under two years of age, because the decree was, to kill every male child two years old and under. So she couldn't take him to the palace. And so Miriam said, oh, you need a nurse. And she said, get me a nurse. But Mir Miriam went and got Moses' mother. Thank God. And she raised her own son up for Pharaoh's daughter. Later, Moses became a part of Pharaoh's household, growing up in the palace. But Moses never lost sight of his identity as a Hebrew. Due to his mother's training, he began to go out and mingle with his people. Y'all stay with me because I'm going somewhere. One day, Moses seeing an Egyptian beating a Hebrew. And he killed the Egyptian thinking no one seen him commit the crime. But when he discovered there had been some witnesses, right. Moses fled to the wilderness. He lived as a shepherd for several years and then he got married. It was in the wilderness that God called him to go back to Egypt and lead the Hebrews out of slavery, right. out of the hands of the Egyptian. The story of Jacobed and Moses and the journey to the promised land are part of the very fabric of the Bible. And the story of Moses all started with the parents of Moses, most notably Jacobed. Right. Their faith was so great that they were inducted to God's hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 23 through 27. Hebrews chapter 11 is often called the hall of faith because in the right of, because in it, the right of the book of Hebrews, he gives examples after examples of faith that saved people in the Old Testament. So I want to give you four things All right. about Jacob Ed mm -hmm. from our text. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you two now and two tonight. All right. So if you want to get the whole story, 
You're going to have to be here tonight. Because there's something in here for every parent. There's something here for every child. The first thing that she gave her son, Jacobez saw the potential in her son. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 3, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child. Now I know the translation different in many translations. In Exodus chapter 2, the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she, when she saw he was a godly child, a goodly child, brother, she hid him three months. Stephen says in Acts 7 and verse 20, at this time Moses was born and was exceedingly fair. The new King James says he was pleasing to God and he was nourished or brought up in his father's house for three months. So the term here is that Moses was a goodly child an exceeding fair child, a beautiful child, a child well-pleasing to God. In other words, what the text is saying is that he was cuter than most babies. That's all it said. You see, remember these are the reactions of parents. She loved him as he was and expected the most out of him. To the modern, sophisticated, career-oriented woman, children are a bother in this day and time. They are a barrier to their advancement. And advancement and self-fulfillment in the world of work is what it's all about today. But Jacobet didn't think that way. She had a biblical perspective on children. She saw children as a gift from God. Yes, they were God's heritage. According to Psalm 127 and verse 5. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. That is, they are a blessing from the Lord. You may not think they are a blessing, but they are a blessing from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hands of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that had his quibble full of him. In other words, a family that has a lot of children. Don't get upset. Hello, I'm talking to somebody. They should not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. In other words, Jacobet saw there was some good potential in Moses. Every parent, especially mothers, you ought to look at your child as if they had every potential in the world to become or be somebody. Now, your child my child don't have to look like Moses to have potential. If God has blessed you with a child, it is up to you to raise that child with the best of your ability believing that God gave you that child as a unique gift from heaven. You ought to do everything in your power to raise that child. Y'all still with me? But let me tell you something that's not in my script. Too many parents are trying to raise their children to 
quick. Let me say it again. Too many parents are trying to raise their children to be adults too quickly or too fast. Let me help you out this morning. If I could go back and undo one thing, not a whole lot, just one thing, you know what that one thing would be? I would go back and live my youth like a youth should have lived their youth. When you fail to live like a youth, you fail to enjoy one of the greatest privileges in your life. Did you not know that? You miss out on a lot of stuff, young folk. Listen. When, when you try to live too quickly and too fastly, and when parents are trying to help you to live like that, and I say that, because y'all can get mad if you want to, but let me tell you something. Parents, you are dressing your kid 15, 12, like they're already 25. They don't understand what it is to be a young person. In particular, our young ladies. Sometimes we raise them so quick, we forget who they are. You have to stop and take a second look at a 12-year-old child to see if that's the same child that's in your Sunday school class last week. Hello. Amen. You miss out on a whole lot. Let me tell you something. If I could go back, I would enjoy being in school. Instead of skipping classes and leaving school. You know what? Even today, I think about running up and down the hallways, being mischievous, cutting up, laughing and talking, but instead of enjoying the cooked up in a youth, I skip school and end up somewhere in a pool hall. Growing up too fast, too quickly. And miss out on what it is to be a youth. Amen. Too many, I'm still talking to parents. Too many of our young ladies are becoming adults too quickly. God forbid, not trying to be offensive, but they're having children while they still a child. And they have to stop living their youth and start living like an adult. Hello, somebody. Now you want your Mother's Day sermon? I'm giving it to you. But you got to understand your child has a right to fulfill every potential in their life. Amen. And like Josh, Jacobed, you got to help them to reach that potential. You got to look at him and see the quality, the good that God has bestowed and given you responsibility to bring out of him. Amen. That's my first point. The second, 
Jacobin didn't, Jacobin did the right thing. No matter what the cost. The second part of verse 23 says, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. She and her husband dared to violate the law to save their son. Generally, we are taught to obey the law. And obedience to the law of the land is something God wants us to teach our children. Paul says in Romans 13 to 1, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. And in Titus 3 and 1, he told Titus to teach his people to be subject to principalities, powers, and to obey magistrates. Peter says in 1 Peter 2, verse 13, he says, submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. We are to obey the law of man in every case, except when they command us to do something that violates God's command. When commanded to not preach in the name of Jesus, Peter responded in Acts 5, verse 29, we ought to obey God rather than man. There are many examples of this in the Bible. Daniel, the three Hebrew boys, Jesus, and the apostle Paul, in spite of the command of the king, Jacobed, he and her son. And the verse says specifically that she and her husband was not afraid. And I believe that this is one of the reasons Moses became the great man that God wanted him to become. You see, sometimes you got, you got to stop listening to the reality shows. Hello? They tell you not to discipline your children. Hello? Now, who are you going to listen to? You going to listen to man? Or are you going to listen to the Lord? Huh? The Bible said, withhold not correction from a child. For thou shalt beat him. And if you beat him, he will not die. He may think he's going to die, but he will not die. Thou shalt beat him and deliver his soul from hell. That's what the Bible says. And now we have parents trying to raise children. And all they're trying to do is talk to them. Let me tell you something. You're talking work, work it. But talking don't work all the time. In fact, the Lord has said, discipline the child. What that mean, preacher? Whatever it takes to get his or her attention, that's what you do. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Don't you know? There are some parents probably here right now who wish they had corrected their children. Amen. Hello? And if we had disciplined them, like God said, it will keep a lot of them out of jail or even out of the grave. And would have kept you from a whole lot of pain. And sleepless night. Amen. Have we disciplined them? Amen. Like God said. Amen. Some things you need to obey God Amen. rather than man. Amen. Moses. from his mother and from his father courage because the Bible said in verse 27 of Hebrews chapter 11 by faith 
He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. You should see his parents didn't fear the king. Moses didn't fear the king. Because his parents trained and instilled in him he needs to obey God rather than man. You see, mom and dad, you, you, do you realize the impact your example makes on your children? When you choose to do the right thing, instead of the expedient thing, your children are watching and learning. When you choose to do right, even to your own hurt, you set an example that your children would never forget. Mom and dad, your children are watching you. They watch the decisions that you make, the choices you make, the sacrifices you make, the way you endure trials, the way you handle adversity, the way you treat people, the way you love or don't love people, the way you talk, and that character would be forged by the example that you and your spouse set. Don't fail your children. Don't fail your children. Give them every hope that you possibly possibly can give him. Don't hold back anything from your child. Allow them to grow up and be children. Don't try to push them out too quick. Let them grow and learn through experience from your life. The kind of husband and wife they need to be when they become adults. Young people, listen to me. Listen to me. If you don't hear nothing else I've said or will say, you need to live your life as a youth. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. God has blessed me to be around for a long time. I know what I'm talking about. Because when you fail to live your life, in particular ladies, as a youth, you are trying to live your life as a youth when you become an adult. I said something. You want to know why a lot of, lot of adults trying to dress like you, young people? Because they didn't live their life as a youth. Now they try and wait. They get to the golden years of their life. <laughs> Listen. And they try to dress like you. Huh? I'm not trying to tell you how, what meant to wear your clothes. But old folk, let me tell you something. You ain't got what you have now back then. There's some things you can't wear now that you can wear then. And if you had taken the time and have grown up in your youth, you could have worn some of the stuff they're wearing today. Hello? They ain't cost you a dime. Just trying to help you. Young people, this is what happened. If you don't live your life as a youth now, you revert back to it when you get older. And that ain't a good time to do it. You hear what I'm saying? And I can say a whole lot more about it. But live your life. 
Parents, help them to live their life as a youth. Let them experience the growing pain as a youth. Let them enjoy what a youth does. I'm not saying let them get in trouble. Teach them to stay out of trouble and avoid trouble. But there are some things a youth is going to do. And everything youth does is not always bad. Huh? Yeah. You know I laugh on Wednesday night. When we get through teaching, there's a, a group of young men and young women be lining the hallways. Young guys, you one of them. You one of them. You one of them. <laughs> and his boys got the young ladies scattered all up and down the hallway. Like high school. And I walk through, and I do it on purpose. I walk in between them. <laughs> but I don't say anything. You know why? That's what youth does. They all preach to young men and young women, and I need to just keep on moving. Huh? They're going to talk to somebody that's well want to talk to. They ain't got no game. They can't rap. Some of the stuff they be saying. Huh? Young ladies don't even be paying them in attention. But that's part of being a young person. Let them grow. They're friends, number one. But let me back up, they're Christians, number one. And they're friends, right here, at this congregation. And what better, what better surrounding can they have? I'd rather for them to talk to each other here. Huh? Than somewhere else where nobody knows where they are. Hello? Amen. I'm not telling you to let them run wild and free. But I'm tell, telling you to let them be a youth with some discipline. Allow them to live out their faith in God. I trust our young people. I do. And I'll be the first one they get out of line to say something. That's right. Amen. Right. It don't matter what you say, Pamela. If I see them doing something, boy, I'm going to say something. Right. Huh? Amen. I'm going to say something too. Amen. And I respect you to do the same for mine. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yes. yes. Well, what this, this is all about trying to help our children. I don't care who say something to my children. I wish somebody that says more to me coming up. But my point is this. Moses, and I get another two points tonight. Hey, godly parents that it was willing at all costs to bring up Moses the proper way. Amen. Brought him up under the nourishment of God and allowed Moses to be the successful prophet that he became. Moses didn't have a flawed free life. He killed a man. Did some other things. But you know that training that his parent gave him never left. And he followed God in all of his ways. I'm saying to you parents today, I challenge you to imitate 
Moses' mother, Jacobin. Look at your child. See the potential in your children. And you develop or bring out the best that they have. And help them to live their life faithfully as a child of God. Let them be children. Let them grow up to be young men and young women. That God will bless and God will use them for his glory Amen. and for his honor. Right. I know it's lunchtime, <laughs> dinner time. There may be somebody here this morning. Maybe somebody who have not yet become a Christian. Today is a good day yes, sir. to become one. Amen. I say it's good because you're still living. You got blood running warm in your veins. You're still able to breathe. You're still being blessed by God. Amen. And since God is blessing you so well, wouldn't it be good to acknowledge His goodness in your life? Yes, sir. That today you submit yourself to Him in obedience to His will. Mm -hmm. Make up your mind that you're going to learn to trust God. You're going to serve Him. You're going to turn away from the past life that you live. Yes. Allow God to give you a new way of living. Mm -hmm. It's called repentance. Yes, that you're going to confess with your mouth what your heart really believe. And that is that Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then be buried with Christ in baptism mm -hmm. for the remission of your past sin. Amen. Baptism washes away sin. The Lord adds you to his church. If you be faithful to the end, he said, I give you a crown of life. That fate is not away. And what he in essence is saying is that I'm going to give you a new way to live. And if you live faithfully, faithfully, he said, I'm going to give you something based on your commitment to me. Don't you want that today? And when you become faithful, you are able to teach your children how to be faithful. Amen. And remember, your children are a gift from God. They are a blessing in your life. And we need to, we need to train them and, 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 and develop them as if they are, and they are, a blessing from God. You as a parent, I know you have great responsibility. I understand the pressure. I understand the sacrifice that you make. I understand everything that comes with being a parent. But even if you're trying to be the best parent, we still fail sometimes. We still make mistakes. But you know when you make a mistake, erase it. Remove it. You may not undo the damage that may have happened, but you can do better by not allowing it to happen again. Not making the same mistakes in raising your children. And if you bless your children, your children will become a blessing to you. If you're here this morning and you're subject to obedience to God's word, if you're repentant of your sin, confessing that you have, why don't you do that this morning? I want you to do it right now. Together we stand and together we sing.